It's a slightly better pack up this time. We see Green here in Nashville, McLaughlin at the front, but look at Colton Herter. He's diving hard on the inside. Pato Award with the point, but Colton Herter's going to force it in on Alex Pelot. He knows he can take advantage of the championship leader. I saw Linus Lundqvist getting beat up a little bit there, pushed around as the new guy, but everyone for turn nine. Look at them, two and three wide tire smoke in the back, side by side. Alex Pelot and Romain Grosjean. David Malukas is up to fourth. What a start from the Dale Coyne HMD racer. And now Christian Lungard, the winner at Toronto in the black and red 45 back there. He's getting racy. New Garden and Kirkwood side by side into turn one here. Kirkwood's going to have to give that position up as they file through that tight chicane. Two drivers who had incidents here last year making moves. Look at that black and red high V Honda. That's Christian Lungard. He loves this race, was really frustrated with qualifying. He wants redemption today in this 80 lap event. Everybody on exceptional behavior as Newgarden looks to make a move and oh Lundgaard big lock up almost gets into the back of Newgarden here on the inside that is Felix Rosenquist, Rosenquist on Castro Neves such a tough corner to get it slowed down you're turning you're breaking it's bumpy it's downhill and now we see side by side that's the pink and white auto nation 27 of Kyle Kirkwood going by the Verizon Chevy at Will Power look at Newgarden he's been swamped in that blue PPT Chevy it looks like Christian Lundgaard just muscled Joseph Newgarden out of the way and now a sea of orange you've got Scott Dixon, and I think that's Rosenquist or Rossi coming in the Aero McLaren. Here's Dixon, the orange and blue machine on the inside. He crashed out of qualifying yesterday, and Dixon has now made his 318th consecutive start to tie his good friend and former teammate Tony Kanaan for the longest run in IndyCar history. Joseph, Incredible. Joseph Newgarden has his hands full. One of the reasons he's on the harder black tire, he opted to start on the primary It'll last longer, but it doesn't have the grip at the beginning of this stint. Scott Dixon knows that. Alex Rossi knows that right behind Newgarden. They're going to try to pounce here. So a lot of drivers opting to start on that alternate tire because you have to run both compounds during the races. We already see one driver, Renus VK. He's in the pits to get off those alternates onto the black sidewalk primaries because, again, you have to run both. But practice was so limited with the weather, with the delays. As we see a pass move now here, Rosenquist on Ray Hall. But these guys have so little tire data, so little tire data. They've got to just figure it out in the race. They want to get these alternates on and hopefully get them off as quickly as possible. Kevin Lee, tell us more about the fifth third bank honger of Graham Rahal. Well, let's let Graham Rahal tell you the story. He's getting ready to pit. Let's listen to radio. I'm going to have to pit. The right front is gone. Pressures look OK. What's going on? It won't stop locking, literally won't stop. Pelot is on a charge. He's bridged the gap to Colton Herter for third. And here comes Pelot. Also, Pelot's teammate Marcus Erickson, if you saw, went past Alexander Rossi by pitting early and getting off the alternates on lap seven. As Grosjean goes by Malukas now. Easy pass. He on the primaries being Grosjean by Malukas on the alternates. Going back to your point, also, Renus VK had got ahead of both of those drivers, both Marcus Erickson and... Uh, so, Diff, we are at the crossover yep, right yep. now. When Rossi ducked into the pits and Grosjean going by Malukas, now Kirkwood should have an advantage. Another driver on the primary tile, Kyle Kirkwood. Let's just ride and listen up. Another car just popped into the pits. What you got to remember, though, that was the 45 of Christian Lundgaard. As he comes in now, we see one of the McLarens coming in as well. That's Felix Rosenquist. Dylan. They thought they might be able to go more like 20 laps, but Christian just came on the radio and said, these are awful. They said the rear tire temps do look high, so the alternate's already starting to go away. Now, this is on the early side. All of these drivers, they're going to have to save a ton of fuel if they don't get any. Oh, oh. big save from Kirkwood there. Auto Nation on board giving us a great shot there. The day has come to a premature end for 21-year-old David Malukas in the Dale Coin HMD Honda. What happened to this talented young man? You can see the rear wing obviously no longer attached. It just failed, it looks like. Well, it was there contact earlier that caused it? We don't know. It, it looked like looked like the uprights had collapsed on top of the carbon attenuator. Top 13 drivers haven't pit so far. Everyone behind them has, so expect all 13 of them to come in. So pits are open, ready for action. Ready for a very busy pit.
pit lane, wow. but not everybody is taking. Wait, what? Wow. Not everybody is taking. The championship leader is. He's all alone until now. And then there's some several others, like Linus Lundquist. As we go to the pits, here's Dave Burns. And Pelot will take Firestone Tires primaries and shell fuel. They asked Pato Award, can you go 10 more laps? There's your answer. He stayed out. Back to racing here in Nashville after the first full course caution for the big machine Music City Grand Prix. Scott McLaughlin heads the field, but he, along with O'Ward, Grosjean, Kirkwood, Power, and Herder, have not yet pitted at Joseph Newgarden, Scott Dixon, and a bunch of others, as Marcus Ericsson, one of those who has pitted, makes the move on his teammate Marcus Armstrong. Great move up the inside of the rookie Armstrong in that green ridgeline car. Now it's Devlin DeFrancesco trying to go by in that blue and yellow Woo Energy car. He's had a great day so far. <laughs> Indeed. I'll tell you what, look at DeFrancesco now under pressure from Alexander Rossi. Rossi surprising the Wu driver up the inside. Lungard now on board. Now, with some of the strategy calls we just saw in that caution, it's a bit of a mixed bag. This guy here, Christian Lungard, he had stopped before that yellow came out, so he is on fresher tires than a lot of the cars in front of him. Marcus Erickson, another one of those who we just saw pull that move off on Marcus Armstrong. So it's a bit of an interesting mixed bag right now. There are 10 who have not pitted. Yeah, now we were wondering why wouldn't you pit under caution if you think you're in range? Well, I think everybody decided, hey, maybe we're not in range as Augustine Canapino muscles the rookie Lundquist out of the way. That was a, a, a rookie rumble right there. The carries country, Maya Shank Honda gets pushed out of the way. Let's show you the restart. It was pretty wild. Contact oh. between O'Ward and McLaughlin. Herder in the black and yellow Gamebridge car. Here comes Grosjean up the inside. It was a mad scramble. And then watch that black and yellow Gamebridge car. There goes Kyle Kirkwood, I believe. And now Colton Herda forced to the outside again. He loses five, six positions on this restart. Now he comes down to turn one. He's going to try to make up for it to the outside of Dixon and he takes the overshoot as Colton Herta now comes in. This is what we didn't understand. Why not come in under that caution? Kevin, what can you tell us on strategy? Well, this is not a strategy play. Colton Herta has concerns. Let's listen. If I have some damage, I got thrown into every wall there. Yeah, so pick three. And that was about two laps ago. Rob Edwards, who you just heard, said, can you go one more lap? He said, no, I've got to come now. So a quick look at the car. Problems on the right rear. Doesn't look like any damage. No concern from the crew. Let's see what a fresh set of Firestones can do. He's now got the primaries on. Everything looks straight. There you go. There's the call from Rob Edwards. But man, that's a that's so a big blow. For reminiscent this team. of Colton Herta earlier. Sorry, Grant oh, Ray Hall earlier. Oh, yeah. Who said, "Hey, I can't even turn my car on the softer alternate tire." Let me just throw this one at you. Herder was a lap down a year ago and came back for a top five finish. We'll see what happens today. This is where he said, I got hit for everybody. Pushed into the wall. Multiple contacts. Wait for Will Power to make his move. There goes his teammate, Kyle Kirkwood. There's one point of contact. His Power, a little bit of hip and shoulder. There goes Newgarden. He just got swamped. It just shows you the momentum that you can lose just from one car going by you. Multiple. Oh, that's oh, there it right go. there. The right front had a huge hit into the concrete wall. Yeah, you could, I mean, you could argue that was a bit naughty from Scott Dixon because he just did not give him enough room. Colton was still there to deserve a car with and just forced into the concrete. So staying out of the mess is part of the game here at Nashville. This was the exchange on the radio between Kyle Kirkwood and his strategist, Brian Herta. Go on, I'm not going to pressure him if he tries to pass out of that copy. Just look out for those two knuckleheads ahead of you. <laughs> So they're really happy with their race car. Jeremy Millis, the engineer, said this is as fast as you need to go, even in clean track. Kirkwood's got a good race car. Wow, massive lockup from Pato Award, and that opened up the door for Romain Grosjean. Pato's got a pit right now where he's going to fall like a lead sinker. Let's see if he peels off here. No, they've already passed it. I was just going to say, I don't know why they didn't immediately pit that car. He is struggling so hard. Will Power Maybe. likely to get a move done here as well? Maybe just waiting for a yellow, I suppose. Either way, you're going to the back. How about the response from Will Power? Scrambling in the pre-race uh, lead-up. Didn't have his earplugs, didn't have his head sock. It was a mad scramble. He was able to get back out, get to his original starting position, and he has settled down and regrouped really well to be running fifth. Right behind, and any moment, he's going to be fourth. And you can just see the advantage for Power on the harder tire is in the power down phase right here. All the corner exits. Look at how delayed Pato Award is on the throttle pedal. Those rears are just fried. They just can't take the horsepower. 
going to be tough to defend here as they come up on the bridge heading for turn nine. Power on the push to pass. You saw those blue lights come up on the dash. He's going to go driver's left. That's going to be the outside if they get to nine, but he's easily cleared the number five. And here comes Renis VK. He arrived fast on the scene. Another lock up from O'Ward. He is just hanging on to that Arrow McLaren Chevy. He's got a pit this time. Floundering, just hanging on to it. Here's New Garden now in the blue and white PPG Chevy. There goes O'Ward finally. Yeah, at least a lap too late, it looks like there, but we'll see how it shakes out. Maybe that extra fuel plays in later, but Newgard doing a great job up in P6. Dave Burns is standing by. Here he is, Dave. -O. Perhaps he could have gone further on his shell fuel, but he had to get those original Firestones off. Primary is going on. The balance was in actually okay. He said he was losing it on both ends of the car, so the balance is there. Balance is there, but the grip was not on those alternates. God, McLaughlin doing a great job. Still running fairly competitive times. 23 laps on those alternates. And I'll be looking for how many seconds Pato Award now will come out behind Alex Pelot. Yeah. Pelot probably out there cruising, saving maybe a little bit of gas, but certainly saving tire. And Pato Award comes out all the way at the back of this field. Only Colton Herta behind him. Watch this. Watch this. Wow, lucky to keep this off the wall. Great job to release the brake pedal, but this allowed Grosjean as we ride on board with Grosjean. Watch the run he gets going down to turn 10. Even though McLaughlin is dominating this race, can you imagine if this is the day that Grosjean gets his first IndyCar win? He would become the third new winner this year, first time winner, and on street courses, Lungard and Kyle Kirkwood. McLaughlin is in. The three crew have made that decision. Here is the race leader. Kevin Lee standing by, he's coming your way, Kevo. So they've done their job. They've made the alternates last long enough to be able to not worry too much about fuel save if it stays green the rest of the way. McLaughlin said, I need a little bit of help with the front. He's gonna get fresh Firestone, so he'll go to the primaries this time. Shell fuel as well, and then we'll see what kind of ground those that have already stopped have made up but have to do some fuel save. Look at that traffic all whipping by. There goes Ryan Hunter-Ray. There's one of the Hunkos Hollinger go. cars. He's going to be stuck in some serious traffic here. Yeah, it's this Canada. is the problem. Not only did you miss that pit under the yellow, even if you've got pace, not easy to get by all these cars in front of you. Kyle Kirkwood in the Auto Nation. Andretti Autosport Honda is in, and Dylan Welsh is there. He stayed out a lap later than Ramon Grosjean just to try and get some clean air. So the happy, they're happy with the race car. They'll probably need some yellow, though, a little bit later on here as they switch to alternates. And you saw he had to hold a little bit for this string of cars coming in. New Garden in the blue and white. You see Dixon in the blue and orange there. They had to hold Kyle Kirkwood, so a couple seconds lost on pit lane from the Andretti Autosport driver. That's going to suffer. That's going to make him suffer a bit on the cell lap. All right, so there's VK. And he is stuck in the middle of Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgarden as they rejoin the racing surface. And Dixon and Power are quite close on track there. Watch this. Oh, yeah, you've got Will Power on hot tires trying to make moves. Meanwhile, upper left-hand corner, you see Alex Pelo now up to third, pitted on lap 14. Erickson and Rossi, if it stays green, almost certainly would have to pit two more times to make it on the end. Pelo probably can make it on just one if he's saving enough fuel right now. Look at this! Oh! Kirkwood, sideways! Castro Neves. Excuse me, Castro Neves. That, that was, was a save. Huge <laughs> save. Oh my goodness. How about the dancing man? That took some fancy footwork to save that and his hands as well. Boy, he's had a lot that got away from him this season, but he managed to hang on right there. That was a veteran set of moves with your hands and feet. Dave Burns is down there in the number eight pit. So Erickson's had a braking problem all weekend long. I talked to engineer Brad Goldberg. He said, we changed the entire system before qualifying. That fixed the problem. And so far today, it's been great. Here we go. Serviced and sent. The way that this race is unfolding, the, uh, the machinations of this is pretty interesting on pit stop rotation and the ver various strategy that's out there. Look at this scrap going on as the BitNile.com Chevy squeezes its way through. That's Renus VK. Here they come, the challengers on the championship leader, Alex Pelot. He last stopped on lap 14. For the nearest chaser, Kyle Kirkwood, he stopped on lap 29. So there's a big disparity between these two, two strategies at play yeah. here. Look at how stingy Pelot's been on the push to pass button. That's the discipline, that's the precision 
of the professor of precision. But, look at how he's getting that done. That's amazing. But look who's at the tail of this train, guys. That Scotty red Mack. and white car of your pole sitter, Scott McLaughlin. He's got a ton of push to pass. He's got fuel to burn, Kev, and he is caught up to this lead pack. And he is trying to move his way forward. Let's listen into what the conversation is on the Thirsty Three Penske Radio. Doing really, really good here. You fell around on this, though. Yeah, no, what you're doing is perfect here. You get a run of one of those guys with Kirkwood's tire struck to go off. That's great. Go ahead and take it. We're right on pace for what we want right now. Excellent. And Scott has also been reminded that Grosjean still has to run the alternates, and he might be able to cross over towards the end of the stint on Kirkwood. We don't think Pelot can make it, so McLaughlin can still win. I remember at the beginning of the season, we said McLaughlin and Grosjean a lot on the streets of St. Petersburg, and it ended with an unbelievable coming together and both of them going into the tyre barrier. Yeah. So they're used to being on track on a street course. So what Pelot needs is to make about one or two more laps here and McLaughlin to be held up. Because then Polo can probably make it to the end. But here we go, Pelot's here we go. The mileage. Here comes McLaughlin. Look at this, side by side with Romain Grosjean at 170 plus miles an hour. Into the braking zone, Grosjean hangs tough. No, monsieur, not right now. Grosjean holding him off. Kirkwood still ahead, but his tires are coming apart. There comes Polo, a little earlier, I think, than they wanted to. Dave, he's coming to you. Townsend, they said he wouldn't tell him until lap, uh, until turn nine, and that was the case when he got the call to pit pit. And you see them now putting on another set of primaries with the red rims and just waiting on the shell fuel, and now he leaves. Yeah, that was a full, full fill. They were waiting on the fuel there because they had to get all 18 and a half gallons of fuel in. Uh -oh. Devlin DeFrancesco on turn uh -oh. nine. Huge. You hear that sort of high screech when you get in reverse that almost falsetto out of the gearbox I said huge if it goes yellow it did not could have been big for polo right there could have been a huge swing for polo unbelievable but opening stint from devlin de francesco unfortunately his day is going in the wrong direction but this is nashville james in the yellow seemingly around just about every corner and look at the marbles that have accumulated on the bridge it is insane this is like an oreo factory out there we've got to remember guys this is more green flag laps than we've run in totally, either of the other totally. races so they're not even sure what the marbling can be like around this racetrack you're looking at Romain Grosjean, looking in his rearview mirrors to see the pole man, Team Penske, Scott McLaughlin. Here comes Scotty Mack. He's had several lunges at Grosjean, but the Frenchman has hung tough. Whoa, he gets out of shape. Opens it up for McLaughlin. There's an inside opportunity for the Dex Imaging Chevy, and he gets him. That's the kind of patience that Kyle Moyer was looking for from his driver, Scott McLaughlin. Uh, you can hear the wheel spin. For Romain Grosjean coming out at turn 10 there. Oh, Those and tires are gone, he yeah. says it. But they want to keep Grosjean up for as long as possible because he has to run alternates on his final stint. That'll be 29 laps in 88 degree heat. Nobody's done that today. This is the Nashville hero, an Indy 500 winner, Joseph Newgarden, who swept the weekend in Iowa. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon is in. And this kind of tells us something about what Romain Grosjean is going to do because Dixon's tires were gone about 19 laps and his alternate run. Will Power has also been complaining about making him last two. Joseph Newgarden, though, on the bottom of your screen, he's hanging on pretty well with those alternates. Same strategy as Kyle Kirkwood, same tires. Pit at the last, uh, last pit was at the same lap, so it's looking pretty handy for the hometown guy right now. Sure is. It sure is. And remember, he is in pursuit of Alex Pillow. I've Points been, as they run, 66 the difference. I've been watching that gap. Look down to 13th position. Alex Pillow was able to close some of the gap to McLaughlin as this side-by-side -side action. Rossi, VK, uh -oh. Uh -oh. elbows out. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Big Whoa. That could have been ugly. And Will Power says, thanks. I'll take two positions off you. Yeah, that was probably going to be looked at by race control as now his teammate Pato Award trying to make a move. If that's a full course caution for VK, we'll have to see if he continues. And a bunch of drivers think it might just be the case. There you go. That is Pato Award and Christian Lundgaard in the pits. I think McLaughlin's on pit lane too, so big exhale for those guys to get in before being caught out. Dave. Quick, quick reaction. Here's his new garden is in, Dave. Now Ward is in as well. Oh, Ward wanted more front wing. Kevin. There's Joseph Newgarden coming in, got the quick call. They were trying to get Scott McLaughlin, but they did not. He's still on track. Danger zone for Scotty Mack. 
BK's in the background. So he that means in. no full course yellow on board with McLaughlin. That was nervous moments for the Dex Imaging team. But they didn't blink. They kept it on track. That's going to help but their strategy. But look at the gap. 23 seconds to Pelot. It'll be close once McLaughlin pits. But he'll have such a big so tire. Be yellow, but there is not. Such a big tire and fuel here. advantage when he comes out over Pelot. I think it's looking very good right now for the Penske group. Two different strategies, but they're both playing out well with Kyle Kirkwood right here in your pink and white car right in the mix. Let's not forget him. Yeah, Kyle Kirkwood running so strong at the front. And Grosjean hanging tough. He gave the... Here we go. Auto, race leader is in. The Auto Nation on board. Kirkwood is coming in. Dylan, he's headed your way. And I think Brian Herta wanted him to stay out a couple more laps. Kyle said these tires are gone, and Brian was asking him to make the in-cockpit adjustments. They'll get off the alternates, go to the primaries. The lack of cautions has worked well for them today. We'll just see where they blend out here. It's going to be good to see where eventually when McLaughlin comes back in, where he is versus Kirkwood versus Will Power and Grosjean whenever Grosjean decides to pit because that's going to be sooner rather than later. Hey, look at this. Honda. Look at this. Kyle Kirkwood, and there is the blue and white of Alex Pelot. The 10 is on hot tires as Kirkwood comes out of the pits. That's a nice little gap, too, Townsend, especially with how much fuel the 10's got to save. I don't think he's really going to have anything to fight the 27. All right, the race is on at the front. Here is McLaughlin in, and we're going to keep a watchful eye on where Kyle Kirkwood is. The race at the front is on. And the pressure is on the thirsty threes. Let's see how they deliver, Kev. And he's in the second pit stall, and Will Power in front was about to pit, but Team Penske just moved the tires back to help out the launch. McLaughlin with one more lap. It was all on that in lap to make up the difference. Let's watch the race in the blend. Oh, look at Pelot. Pelot's down into turn one. Where's Scotty Mack? He comes out behind Kirkwood. Kirkwood's still in front. So McLaughlin in between Pelot and Kyle Kirkwood. Kirkwood has the advantage. He's already done it once on the streets of Long Beach. Kirkwood looking really good. Lee, we recently saw a disagreement over space on track between Renus VK and this driver, Alexander Rossi. It ended up with smoking tires and a near collision. There's Rossi on the left-hand side. On the right is VK as they go in and out of frame. There was contact right here. And for that, boom. VK got a drive-through penalty for the contact. As for Rossi, bent left rear toe link. They repaired that and sent him back on his way, but he's now two laps down. Oh, no, oh. we have trouble. Linus Lundquist down in turn 11, I believe. Here is the yellow everybody was waiting for. Unfortunately, this is really the only error this kid has made this weekend. And look at the what a marbles shame. on his left front, which tells me maybe he got pushed wide onto a really dirty racetrack. I'm so sorry, guys. I know. The marbles on that. Heard the marbles there from Lundquist as Mike Shank says, ah, 10 to go on a brilliant debut. Look, I know that he's sorry, said it on the radio, but you can, you know, you can hold your head high, young man. That was a heck of a debut here in the IndyCar Series. That is not the last time we've seen Linus Lundquist behind the wheel. And let's of IndyCar. not forget, he has not had the cockpit cooling, of course, for 40, 50 laps. Of course. Guys, this is a huge break for Alex Pelot. Oh, yeah, it is. Having just been told to turn up the wick, he can now go into crazy fuel save mode. But let's take a look. Top of your screen, just, yeah, lost it early, got wide. Oof. And That's this is devastating hit. for Newgarden because if Polo was going to pit under green, he might still have to. Oh, boy, that's shocking. He what happened barely there? barely got offline. It just shows you with this much green flag running. Again, we've run no, more no, green no, flag in any of the, than any of the races we've done here. And I don't know that the IndyCar is going to have time to send the sweepers out, so all those marbles will still be there as another car has also had contact. That's the 30 of Jack Harvey in the Custom Entertainment. And he'd only just pitted, too. He hadn't long come long ago come into the pits. Yeah, it's 10 laps ago. Oh, was... The wheel just snapped out of my hand. Wheel, wheel snapped just... out of his hand. We saw that in Toronto with Roman Grosjean. Took him out of the race there, just kicked back through the wheel. We've talked about how bumpy this place is. No power steering in an Indy car. The wheel just constantly trying to rip itself out of the driver's hands. This is what happened to Jack Harvey. This is in turn eight, Ugh. coming onto the back straight there. With the caution out, as you said.
Let's go back to racing here in Nashville. Look at the marbles firing green, off the green, Firestone green. tires. They go single file, but it's going to get lock up crazy. As soon as the green is called, you can pass. You see up at the top of your screen in 10, a bit of cars getting side by side here into 11. That's Marcus Armstrong defending in the green car. Great work. Kyle Grosjean. Kirkwood, Grosjean's pressing. There's Erickson. Shot. Four cars have crashed at the very back. Ryan Hunter Ray, at least Hunter one Arrow McLaren. Hunter. Whoa, 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 whoa. Benjamin and Peterson. Felix Rosenquist. Canapino. Oxy Canapino. All right. One, two, three. They are four. stacked like a car transporter. I mean, that's that's a lot of cars to not just move, but move off each other with only six laps to go. This yeah. might be something like a one or two lap shootout. Or a red flag. Or a red flag. We've done it here two years in a row. <laughs> four, to, four to go last year, the red came out. It's yeah. six to go now. Herder okay. goes around. There's Hunter Ray. Nothing wrong there. Oh, Felix just, Felix went in deep. Canapino went in deep. P Peterson went in deep. Listen to this. He just gets on the marbles. So his right oh. tires are dirty. Let's listen here. Yeah, there's just nothing he could do. The Look right the sides were dirty. Look at the left front. It's and then he was mess. turning in from the top. Did you notice Herder hit the wall? Ahead oh. of him. Herder hit the wall yeah, as well. Yeah, he's been doing that since the first lap. <laughs> I mean, he got pushed wide there on the opening lap, so that's oh, why he, he comes to pit lane, as everybody will, for the red flag. Red flag is out, guys. We are setting up for another Nashville showdown. And we're ready to finish off the big machine Music City Grand Prix here in Nashville in a big and spectacular way. Kirkwood with a great restart, as he did the time before. Look at Newgarden. Newgarden just got into the back of Alex Palau. It was a kiss, but it was enough to say, I'm here. Try and unsettle him. Elio Castro Neves and Will Power right there. Callum Eilat, also Graham Rahal. Now Power on the outside of Castro Neves. I'm not sure that's going to work with how slippery that corner is. He's going to have to give it up. Eilat all sideways coming off 11. We all managed to make it through. Now through turn one. Up front, up front. Newgarden hasn't been able to do anything about Palo, and Palo was on. McLaughlin, Kirkwood has gone. The race leader has bolted. Push to pass available, but I doubt Alex Palo is allowed to use it, so Joseph Newgarden has to be oh, on the attack Oh, slippery. Here. Alex Palo almost lost the back end of this race car. That was so close to disaster. Augustine Canapino stuck in the barriers in turn one, still green for the moment. For the moment. Local yellow in turn one. And Newgarden might get a shot here as he comes out of turn seven up onto the bridge. We know Palo has pushed to pass, yep. but does he have fuel to use it? Oh. Here comes Newgarden. Newgarden's tail end was all over the place there. The PPG Chevy in pursuit of the championship leader. Here's the white flag. One to go, 2.1 miles. Can Kyle Kirkwood do it? McLaughlin appears to be closing. He He's is. responded to that pressure from Palo. He's got his head down. He does not want to finish second two years in a row. Now Newgarden seems to be finding some pace further back, closing a bit on Palo. That distance between first and second was as much as two and a half seconds after the restart. It's down to less than a second. Here comes Scotty Mack. This is not over yet. Palo hanging in there. Back-to-back -back podiums in as many races, the second race at Iowa, and here in Nashville, that's gonna help sustain an 80-plus point championship lead. Last time over the bridge, out of eight, Kyle Kirkwood up through the gears. Just really one, may call it three corners to go, three left-handers, you gotta nail the brake zone, hit your apex, and if you're Scott McLaughlin, you're thinking, no, not two not years again. in a row. Well, the first two races here in the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix have been won by Chip Ganassi Racing. It's going to be a different team winning this year. Andretti Autosport out the front. Andretti Autosport in control. McLaughlin saying this is history repeating. I can't believe it because he's looking at the back of Kyle Kirkwood, who wins in Nashville, we Tennessee. Nashville hot chicken dinner, buddy. Good job. Kirkwood. Come on, great strategy, great pit stop. Ah, uh, win number two of the year. Come on, boys, finish strong.
Hey, Kyle, celebrate a little bit more. You just won. He's too tired, man. He's too hot. He's too tired. He wants to get that helmet off. He wants a cold drink of water and to celebrate with this crew here. Huge congrats to Andretti Autosport and the crew on the 27. That was, as Dylan said earlier, that was a Brian Herta strategy masterclass, as well as an excellently, perfectly executed race from behind the wheel from this guy. Tell me about trying to hold off a hungry Scott McLaughlin at the end. Man. How did you do that? Man, I'm not sure, to be honest. He was so fast at the end. We were really good on just the initial lap. Um, but right there at the end, man, they were so fast. And they ran me down just in that last lap. Um, but I got to give it off to the, the 27 crew, Auto Nation, uh, Andretti, Honda. I mean, they, they played everything in my favor, to be honest. Uh, they, they gave me all the tools I needed. Um, I really only made a couple passes on track, and they, they cycled me to the front on strategy, and we just made really smart decisions and hit all of our marks. Uh, so just a solid day for the 27 crew, no doubt. Watch the Gallagher Grand Prix Saturday, August 12th at 2 p.m. on USA Network.